My name's Mark Starr and welcome to Little Green Man, the, the show that proves Canadian politics is very, very sexy indeed. Oh yeah. Now I've got a question for you. What has the royal family ever done for us? Medicine? Education? No, 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 that was the Romans, these guys. <laughs> What have the royal family done for us? So it's, a, it's actually a lot easier to, maybe to answer that question, at least in recent terms, with what have we done for the royal family. And we'll go there just very quickly. It's a very simple little thing that happened. A, a wedding happened. There's a royal wedding. Of course, taxpayer money went to it. Who else would pay for it? They certainly wouldn't pay for much of it themselves. Uh, side note, sorry. Um, about £32 million was actually spent on, on the wedding. It was about um, $55 million Canadian, let's put that into perspective for you there. Um, that's £30 million was paid for by the tax, uh, the British taxpayer. That's about £10 million more than was estimated. Now, if we put that in perspective with an average Canadian wedding, that would be approximately $32,000 to $51,000 Canadian. Compare that with the $55 million Canadian for the royal wedding. So they got a gift of a wedding that was more than um, well, a million dollars. Let's put this in perspective. A million dollars is approximately what someone making minimum wage right now, $11.15, will make for 40 years, their entire working life, $1 million. So that's 55 people could an entire life's work for 55 people, or certainly 55 families. That's, put that in perspective, for one day in the life of a royal one royal couple. So we give them a lot, and of course we, we can go through all the, the other um, things that the royal family does have, and what it doesn't have. It has the land, it has all that, um, it has income off that land as well, plus it gets a, a rather um, healthy stipend from the British government. I don't know how much of that comes from the Canadian government or from the Canadian taxpayers, I should say, um, but it's kind of really relevant for what I'm getting to, for what I really want to say. The big problem, I think, is um, with the royal family is that I was really indifferent to this. Now, I think a lot of people are, are fairly indifferent to the royal family. They're there, you know, it's kind of nice, they're nice, it's kind of nice to have around. Um, every now and again, you, um, you, know, you, you see them waving as they drive by, should you live in London or you want to go look at the big house at the end of Pall Mall, you know, that kind of thing. But really, I don't, I, up till this year, I hadn't really cared one, more, one way or the other whether we have a royal family or not. My thoughts have changed on that just quite recently, just within the last few weeks, the last few months, while I was thinking about this very question, well, not a joke. It was a serious question that I started to think about. What have they done for us? What do we have them to thank for? What do we really have them to thank for? Well, for a start, I just want to quickly dispel the myth that the royal family, um, that Elizabeth and uh, Prince Charles, and of course their offspring, are English. They are not English. They are not of English descent. They are, in fact, a... Um, a German family. Uh -huh. And when I say a German family, we've got the Mountbatten's, which was Philip's, Prince Philip's last name, and the Windsor's, which is uh, Eliz Elizabeth's uh, last name. But they were actually related by blood. They're, they're cousins, uh, second or third cousins, something along those lines. So they're the same family, part of the same family tree, not in an immoral or taboo way, I hasten to add. But they're not English. They are actually a German a royal family. Now, do you remember during the uh, last presidential election in the U.S., the, um, so a comedian, um, John Oliver, came up with the, the, the notion to dig into a little bit into the Trump family history, and they came up with, his name isn't really Trump, it's Drumpf. Or at least several hundred years ago, his family changed his name to, from Drumpf to Trump. And let's make fun of that, because it's funny. And it kind of is, really. But we can do the same thing with the royal family. How far do we have to go back to get their real name? What is Elizabeth Windsor's real name? Well, she's not a Windsor, that's an affectation. And it was something that was added, uh, the name was changed during the First World War because of a very, very massive anti-surprise, anti-German sentiment that was going through the British Isles. Of no kidding! So Elizabeth's name is actually Saxe Coburg Gotha. That's the name of the house. Now it's the house of Windsor. It was the house of Saxe Coburg Gotha. And it was changed in 1917 because of the war. And Prince Philip, I forget, he was actually born in Greece. Uh, the royal family that was kind of dethroned, I believe. And his family name wasn't actually Mountbatten. It was Battenberg. These were German families with German names that had German friends and family. And 
pretty much at the time, um, at that time of the First World War, pretty much all the royal families, whether they were re in re reigning or not, were all related by blood. So let's put that in perspective, is that when the Russian Revolution happened, and uh, was it Prince Wilhelm? I got, probably got the name wrong, I didn't write it down. Nicholas II, sorry, was actually Queen Victoria's grandson. So when the Russian Revolution happened, and everyone was, oh, this is horrible, it's really a blood feud between the people of Russia and the royal family, and the, the ruling class of Great Britain. So there was some, it was a, lot, a little bit more than just, uh, oh look, they're communists and they're, they're, they're being unruly. It's, it was a matter of, this is our family they kicked out and potentially could have, could have executed. And so when we look at the world now, things are just a little bit different when we realize one country is in, in relation to another country, it's the people at the top, the ruling people, the royal families are all the same blood. They are related by blood. So they're all one big happy family defending each other when they're not too busy trying to battle each other and kill each other to steal their lands, which the royal family seems to do, which is really sort of odd. So then what did the royal family actually give us? Right now, they're, they're pretty much an affectation. They're a wave in the window. They're a, a caricature of this big posh family that speaks like no English people speak. And they live in a way that no English people live. And they hang out with people that English people do not hang out with at all and they get a free ride and a free ticket and everybody else pretty much pays their way for them. And so after two world wars fighting with Germany and other skirmishes with other countries that are pretty much ruled by people who are related to our current queen, we are still tricked into virtually worshipping a family that didn't even originate in the British Isles, let alone not being English. That's one thing, fair enough, right? Everything settled down, whatever happened in the past has happened in the past. But, unfortunately, a lot of what happened in the past is still happening and affecting everybody now in an incredibly massive way. So let's go back to the first English king, as he's often referred to. it would be William the Conqueror. Think about that. William the Conqueror, 1066, invaded, uh, killed King Harold, and stole the throne, depending on how you want to interpret uh, what happened then? Was he the real king or was he not? Um, irrelevant. He came along, decided he wanted that land, brought some, not, some Norman soldiers, there might have been a few, but he actually brought uh, Flemish soldiers over, mercenaries, came over and took over England, having killed the king, killed a lot of people. And what was the first thing that William did? He instituted this wonderful, wonderful British institution called feudalism. He turned what were free living British citizens and turn them into slaves that were bound to the land. It's different from the chattel slavery that was seen in the, in the US for sure, but it was still slavery nonetheless. And it was slavery that lasted from the time that the Normans landed, feet landed on the shores of Hastings to, to well into the 1600s. And there was you know, the effects of feudalism, of the per people being peasants, working for the Lord of Martha, having to give them pretty much everything that they, they, they produced and giving it to the Lord of the Manor um, and having no freedom of their own, or very little freedom of their own. And that was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. But that's not Queen Elizabeth's fault. William was a thousand years early, nothing to do with him. Unfortunately, Queen Elizabeth was, is the 22nd granddaughter of William the Conqueror. Go look that up. She is related by blood to the man that took freedom from the English people and turned them into slaves for the best part of five, six hundred years. So what do we have to thank the royal family for? Well, feudalism. But feudalism's gone, it's long past. Well, actually, feudalism has gone, but that developed into a very clear and a very unfair and a very biased rich versus poor class system where the very few people that had lots were the royal family and the cream of the crop and the, and the nobles and then you had the working class and the working poor and the, and the, um, and the not working poor, the unemployed poor and then you had a, a several layers of or strata of social class in between with most people being in that bottom half and many of them starving. And as feudalism collapsed, uh, the common lands that were people that the peasants were allowed to 
uh, feed their animals on or to go hunting or to um, gather firewood to snare some some game that kind of thing where they could eke out some kind of subsistence was enclosed and it was uh, uh, turned into sheep farms so that they can no longer take part in that they as the sheep farms grew and grew and grew become more aware privatization took place and we're talking like the 1600s here this isn't something that just happened and it turned that um, privatization turned the people that used to be bound to the land but they're no longer bound to the land they had their literal freedom to go and be poor and there was a massive massive waves of of, of vagrants wandering across the United Kingdom, or well, it wasn't the United Kingdom then, but across uh, the British Isles, looking for work, looking for food, looking for a future. And this happened for hundreds of years. And as the class system settled down, that then develops into that, that capitalism, um, the privatization, the capitalism grew up and out of that, and then the industrialization made the capitalists even more powerful. And then some commoners were able to float to the surface and become the new, the new upper class, the merchant class, and were sort of able to merge. The new money was able to merge with, merge with the old money a bit. And so here we are, looking back now from all of that, that the royal family has given us, abject poverty. The diseases that were that came along with came along with the poverty, the oppression and the death, and the destruction and the lives and the futures lost. That's what we have to thank William the Conqueror for. Why are we calling him William the Conqueror? No, William the Enslaver. William, the son of a... Who took our ancestors and turned them into slaves. That is the legacy of, the, of this royal family. Elizabeth isn't responsible for that. And none of her family, none of her immediate family are responsible for that. But she has got what she's got because her great grandfather 22 times removed invaded and turned us into slaves the only reason she's got the land she does the only reason that sh that we are her subjects is because we were once slaves to her family and funnily enough we are still her subjects was the royal family given us not so near as damn much as we've given them we've given them our land we gave them our freedom and now they just sit there as if nothing had happened taking our money. Bill Greenman. This is the back door to the Manitoba Legislator. Now, if you hit the subscribe button now, hit the notification bell, then you won't be surprised when they try to stick something up your back door.